Well, that there's about the smallest red back I've ever seen in my backyard. Well, guess what's going to happen next? Good night, sister. Dusted. The beep has been removed from this video. And as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep. Babe. Okay, it's red back roundup time. I'm out the front of my place and I'm seeing some very, very nasty and suspicious web going on around there. Hmm, wonder what that is. I've got a torch with me. Maybe that's going to illuminate the situation. Ooh, I don't like it up there at all. I've got a special way of dealing with that there. It's quite effective and it works like this. Dusted. If I'm lucky or unlucky, I'll be able to drag the carcass out of this um, little spider home here. And if I don't find anything, well, I'm just going to be in more trouble, aren't I? What's worried me a little bit here is I can't see what I want to see here, and that is one black spider that's a bit crispy critter. Hmm. I might just put a little bit of heat into this area just here. It won't take much. Okay, that should do it. It is good for weed control as well. That weed will die. But I really want to see a spidey. Mm, I'm not seeing what I want to see there either. I'll leave that one as an unsolved mystery. Next up, I'll take a look at Barbie, my pet, redback spider. I noticed underneath here is the last cockroach that I fed her. I think it was the fourth or fifth one. There it is there. Not looking too crash hot, the old cockroach, is it? That was Barbie's last meal. I can put that over with the ant empire, which is living just there. The ants at my place absolutely love me. I'm doing this at the end of the day. It's actually been a very warm day for, well, we're heading into winter, so you get some strange weather every now and then. Let's check the lid before I get in here. Okay, let's take a look in here. There's Barbie the Redback Spider. I'll try and raz her up a bit. I think she'd be getting ready for a quieter time when winter comes. I can't see another egg sac there. But she's very, very happy girl indeed. Look at that. Oh, she's going for the tweezers. Nasty little girl. Mmm. Well, live and let live. She is my pet redback spider. And I will very gently put the lid back onto her. Very salubrious and wonderful spider home. Okay, looking at my redback spider control chart, which is very educational. With cocky screeching in the background, where we're at at the moment is April. It's the 25th of April when I'm shooting this video. This would be the last burn of this spidey season. That was the educational component, we can get rid of that now. In this red back roundup, I'm not gonna waste time looking at things where there's gonna be no spider. There's no web here, so there's no use looking in here. This is another haunt here where the red backs love to go to the lures, but there hasn't been a red back here for quite some time. There's no web here, so there's no use wasting your time here. There's another lure here, there's no web underneath here at all, and believe me, it's clean. I know you say, oh, let's have a look. Nothing in there. Okay, let's just keep moving on. Quite a few people ask me about the bins. How's it going once I put the white lithium grease on? Well, let's take a look at this red bin. It just got emptied the other day. Well, to me, that's looking very clean. I can't see any spider web around here. Where they like to really set up is places like here. Completely clean. They love this area here as well. There's the other wheel. You'll see it better with light on it. I can't see any substantial spider web going on there. No red backs. Even up here where the spiders love to lurk around, it's pretty good. That white lithium grease really keeps the spider at bay. Here's the green bin here. Sometimes you'll see little bits of spider action trying to set up and maybe some very, very fine web, but nothing substantial. I better show you underneath the green bin as well. It's looking pretty good to me. That's looking very spider free. I like it like that. There you go. There is that query. Finally answered. I'll get this bin upright. Ah, it's going to fight me. Get out. Ugh. Just for some of the newer viewers who may not understand why that white lithium grease is on my bins, I've just wound back some video to show you how redback spiders interpret our council bins. And this is a massive, massive problem where I live. I reckon every bin in the suburb has got a redback spider nest somewhere on it. When you start doing the scary spider math, think about it. Every house has got at least three bins. Every bin presents multiple areas for redback spiders to live on. A single female redback spider can easily generate a thousand spiderlings in one spider season. And when you add it all up, you're talking about numbers which is almost greater than the population of humans on the planet. 
So when you hear me talking about redback spider apocalypses, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to point out some cold, hard facts. So yes, the council bins, trash bins, recycling bins, whatever bin you want to call it, they present in multiple ways as the perfect redback spider home. Yes, you can manage the redback spider problem, but because I'm a really lazy person, I like to just do things once and then just leave it. The white lithium grease will keep the spiders away. And remember, Henry Ford rejoiced in employing lazy people on his car production line. Lazy people power the planet. Before I take a look out the back, this olive drum here presents to us something really interesting if you've got a keen eye for redbacks. When I take a look at the handle area here, there's a really, really fine web. And I believe this is juvenile redback. And maybe if I spin this round, we'll see a spidey. I'll just push this over a bit so I can see more clearly up into the handle there. Okay, it's very, very fine web. The web is all around this area here. And where I'm going to poke the tweezers is where the little, little tiny spidling redback is. Okay, this redback is tiny. It's about as small as you're going to see it. And if I give it a prod, it should do a runner. Oh, it's just dropped down. Is it going to climb back up? Yes. I'll have to deal with that redback, won't I? Good night, sister. Dusted. I can't see that tiny redback spider anymore, can you? Might have been a little bit over the top, but at least it's effective. I'll head out the back now, try not to hit my head on a choco. And the pumpkin vine failed this year, and I have sort of don't know why, or maybe I do. It was very dry before Christmas, had a big drought and of course the bushfires. And what would normally be right out across the grass here, all the way over here, has not done it this year, it's only remained there, right near the garden bed. I think Mummy's only found two pumpkins so far. I know we've eaten one, and there's only another one here, so that's three. Uh, yeah, something's gone tragically wrong with the pumpkin harvest this year. I'll come down to this part of the backyard. Um, I just have to be a bit careful what I say here. I've got uh, some people watching me. I won't say too much more. I'm just having a look here to start with, see what's going on. Now, one big difference here now is Mummy's put down all this wood chip. Okay, because we've got a massive free delivery of it, so it's getting put around the garden everywhere. This could totally change the environment and the way the critters work versus where the redback spiders like to fit up. I'll just lift this up and see what comes running for its life. There's lots of those sorts of things in there. Okay. And, uh... Yes, this is big wood chip under here as well. It may have really changed what goes on here. I'll tell you one thing. It's looking remarkably clean up between these tubs. Remarkably clean. Well, you know, the mantra now, if you're not seeing web, uh, you're not going to find a spidey. I have got the monkey tool here, because I know you like to see the monkey tool being dragged through on things. I'll go through some tubs, hey? I think there's something about the sound of the monkey tool doing its work. If I don't talk, you'll hear it. <laughs> That's looking pretty clean to me. The other thing Mummy was doing around here, and lots of it is coffee grounds, and I think that's also changing the way things work. No, it's looking very clean, isn't it? Very clean, which is good. I'll just do two more. Oh, I said I've got someone watching me. Okay, so I have to be very quick here. I just hope they don't see what I'm up to. No, that's looking pretty good. I've got those guys spying on me as well. They're right near me, they don't know I'm here. <laughs> There's that much wood chip underneath this lure here. Let me just see what's going on in here. Okay, oh, there is a little bit of fine, very, very fine web in there. I can't really see a spider jumping at me. Just in case there is a spider there, I've got the perfect fix. Dusted. I'll tell you what, there's quite a transfer of heat in that process. That's actually quite warm, and I'll just very carefully put it back. Uh, here's the other lures up the end of the tubs there. Sorry for all the sun flare. It is uh, near the end of the day. I'm not feeling any web there. Sort of dangerous thing to do, isn't it? Oh, I should look, shouldn't I? Curiosity always kills a cat. No, it's totally clean. I keep wasting time, don't I, looking at things where there's no spideys, and I would... Look, I'll just get my torch in here. Nah, there's not a skerical web there. There'll be no spidey. 
This is all very, very good news because it confirms my little process of um, doing the redback roundups. Well, sort of a backyard, uh, very low lying tomato vine there. Another failed pumpkin vine here. Man, it's just very, very disappointing what's going on here. But the citrus this year has been absolutely incredible. Uh, this is a tree that was purchased from Aldi many, many years back now. And a funny way, it's finally come good. But then again, I have been controlling them. Think both of you know what? The old, old lemon tree has got lemons on it like we've never seen before. It is totally amazing. I've got a little friend here and he'll be very good at picking off the red backs as well. I like to see him here, he's nice. In fact, the whole family's come across now, which is very nice, I won't disturb them. This part of the garden has been a lot of things moved here and added, uh, the wood chip is down on the ground here. I think this is gonna change things a lot. Okay, it's all through there. Uh, one of the spider lures is there, but I'll just come through and check the tubs through here next. I've got a torch with me here because it's getting a bit dark here. That would be what cats are doing. There's a bit of scratching of stuff going on there. Going along to the next one. Okay, we've got redback spider there. I can see the very, very distinctive web going on there. I'm not sure what we'll see, uh, but I know one thing I'm going to get next. I'll just do a bit of a wet down here. And remember, it only takes one spider to get a nest up and running. And it really kicks off the next bitey apocalypse. This is the cooling shower before the heat wave hits. It's about to get very hot. Dusted. Okay, I'm coming in and I'm look, trying to find uh, what's left of the uh, th Spidey. Uh, but at first glance, I'm not seeing what I want to see. I'm just taking a very close look there. It's one of these things, it's like a black thing with black legs against all the things that are black. And I think it would only be a very small one from the structure of the web. Actually, I think I can see it. It's very small. It's right there. I'll just tweeze that out. Okay, that's the red back there. Okay, I've got it on that bleed of grass. There's that red back there. It's actually very small. It was a massive flame for a tiny spider, wasn't it? You can just see the red starting on its back. It's about the size of what Barbie was when I moved her to her home. And it doesn't take long for these spiders to get up a good size. Anyway, I can put it down on the ground for the ants to eat. Oops, sorry, she's a bit squishied up now. Ants will love her. That's a nice little meal. I've got to be careful now because mummy's in the garden. That, that's going to stop a few activities. <laughs> um, here's one of these other luxury traps here. Lures? Oh, got to use the word lure. Trap's a bad word. Uh, there's no web underneath that, so we won't bother taking a look in there. Now, just around these tubs here, I can see some very loose web. Now, redbacks tend to do tight styles of web. There's a bit of web running along here as well. I'm a little bit curious about what's going on around here. Hmm. Yeah, it's a sort of webby things going on. I'll get a sneaky one in while Mummy's not watching me. <laughs> Dusted. Phew. Somehow Mummy didn't notice that and she's just... She's just through there. <laughs> But the main thing is, I can't see that web problem there anymore. What's tricky here now is as these tubs are really hard to inspect, so I just drag the monkey tool through. They're actually coming through pretty clean. And it's horrible white, so it plays up with the exposure as well. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it just I think creates more problems than what it's worth. We seem to get more and more of these tubs in the backyard. Okay, well, that lure in there has literally been buried by additional things to the garden, but I'm not seeing any web down there. So let's assume that one's empty. Positive thing that I see going on here, and that's ant activity. There's an ant on top of the lure there. There's ants going across here. I reckon if I roll this out, there'll be a massive ant nest underneath. Okay, yeah, it looks like something ant rific and all sorts of other things going on there. So ants are our friends. Oh, the back here, it is radically different from all the wood chip on the deck there. I'm just looking for obvious spider web around here. 
And well, once you got your eye in, redback spiderweb is obvious. Normally they're around this watering can. They love metal things, but uh, when they're in the shade, they tend not to be so attracted to it. It's looking pretty clean. And I will do a drag through here. And if any spiderweb does come out, that's, that's telling me there's trouble, but I'm not seeing a uh, web coming down to the ground around the tubs, which is really good. This is another zone where the redbacks love to set up. Lots of pots they like to get underneath here. They love places like this where they can drop stuff down the ground. And it's looking pretty clean. It's looking pretty darn good. There's another pumpkin vine there which hasn't done very much. Um, this area really is different now. The wood chips down, what used to be there was an old like Besser brick incinerator. Of course, it never got used because you can't burn anything for, well, for donkey's years. There's been all sorts of rules where I live about burning stuff. You can't have fun anymore. That's the, that's the way society's structured. Now, I'm not seeing web, so that's great. Yeah, okay. And this is the sort of pots that they love, but of course, there's no web there. Nice and clean. Yeah, so the, actually, the garden trend has transformed a lot, um, really since summertime that'd be the best way to say it along here that's looking pretty good mummy shadow just went through there so she's following me so i'm going to be in trouble if i get you know what out it's looking pretty clean that's the infamous citrus that i completely burned with smither and now it's got fruit i love going back in time and reminding myself and showing you how many stink bugs were infesting this citrus tree Stink bugs do a stack of damage. I don't understand where stink bugs are in the circle of life. To me, they are just nothing but a complete nuisance. And from what I understand, nothing is their predator. I don't think anything can touch these, but I'll tell you one thing, a little bit of heat can really disturb their life cycle. And when I put some flame over this tree, those stink bugs were dropping like flies. And so many people had to go at me online. Oh, that citrus tree's dead. It's gone. You've just totally destroyed it. You don't know what you're doing. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry, guys, but all of the experts online were totally wrong. I smashed the stink bug colony off this tree. Yes, the tree did suffer for a bit. But man, when it came back, it has come back like we have never, ever seen before. This tree now has a life. This tree is now bearing plenty of fruit. While those stink bugs were in control, this tree was never ever going to bear fruit. <laughs> That's my style of gardening. And just here, I will do a couple of monkey tool drags. There's no web between the tubs. I've just had a look. It's coming through clean. Mm. I do like the sound it makes. I just got these tubs here as well. Oops, not enough room. I better separate this a bit, eh? Whoa. Hmm, I just actually noticed there's some very, very fine yeah, okay, there's juvenile red back spider web, very, very juvenile, sitting up here, and I've just separated that, and I will do a drag through here. Oh, a piece of tub just fell out, because, <laughs> because someone's burned it and crisped up all the plastic. I wonder who did that. Yeah, uh, I don't like what's going on right here, there's something small here. I can do a little boutique burn here, I think. Just, uh, Oops, that set the backyard on fire. Naughty, naughty boy. And I've just noticed there's a bit of mystery plastic here. What do you think that's from? Hot wheel set or something? Hmm. Oh, well, I'll just um, hide it up here. So with the way the garden's set up here, there's a lot of critter activity. That's going to probably keep the red backs at bay. But I'm feeling way, way too many tubs for my liking. Okay, the final bit of the garden, and this area here was where I did a two-year study of what total neglect does to the redback spider population. Very, very interesting what happened here when it was totally neglected. I don't think anyone can predict the outcome of what I find going on here. In fact, I'm sure of it. That two-year of neglect in the garden study has been done. It's put together. But when I made that video, I had to go back and look at the beginning of the redback spider infestation in my backyard. It was 2016, it was down amongst the children's toys on the ground, and when I started to take a much closer look, there was a lot of mature redback spider activity going on there. And it's that video there which is really the beginning of me taking a much, much closer look at the Australian redback spider. 
Let's remember, this is one of Australia's most deadly spiders. And maybe what's most astonishing about these spiders is the way they've adapted to the way we set up our suburbs. They certainly seem to have an advantage versus the predators that would normally take out these spiders. I was very fortunate one day to capture some video of a skink that had grabbed a redback spider, but unfortunately, I don't see that scenario going on enough. When I look back at this initial infestation versus what I see going on in the backyard now, I can really see that the redback spider roundups have made a massive change in the spider population around my home. Okay, this section of the garden, and I know there's a lot of pony ant activity going on here, lots of pony ants. Uh, no web, no spidey. Mrs. Chooks, I'm um, looking happy there, and the lure here. No web at all, no spidey. And another luxury lure here. I should move this somewhere else where it's a little bit more useful. No web, and I can guarantee to you, please believe me. No, there's no spidey, there's nothing down there. I can put my hand down there quite safely. I had to do that or else you wouldn't believe me. I will grab these out because I've actually tidied up the rat problem for this year because I've become very efficient at understanding how to, ooh, how to lure these little varmints in the traps because I know the perfect bait. Up there's a possum home. All the possums actually live up in that tree there. They're quite fun to watch at night. I think humans evolved from possums by the way they stand on their back legs. And I notice here, mummy's got a, a new bunch of plants and things and pots. And I'm having a look around here and this is all freshly set and I can't see any web. So as I always say, if you're not seeing web, uh, there'll be no spider, but unfortunately, because I know this area here gets nice and warm in the afternoon, that will be the perfect place for redback spiders to reside. They love areas like this. With the sunset just about to happen there, just got this video done in the nick of time before I lost light. It was quite nice to find not too many redback spiders getting about. At least I didn't find any established nests or redback spider egg sacs. And as long as I can keep doing my little fire control method, I can keep on top of the trouble. But you've also got to identify where these little critters live. That's very important. Well, I hope you enjoyed this redback spider roundup. There won't be another one until my next spider season, which sort of, well, kicks off about August, September. I think I'm stuck home for a fair bit of time, so whether or not I'm allowed out of the house by then, well, that's entirely a totally different question.